Welcome back. Select statements allow us to wait on several go routines. Now, why would we want to use a select statement instead of just ranging through a channel like we did in the previous video? Well, select statements allow us to listen to channels of different data types. But with our example here, as you can see, uh, we're going to be listening to four different channels. We have one that communicates with strings, one that communicates with ints, one with a data type that we've created ourselves, and one with bool. As you can see, uh, Go routines don't have a return value, so error handling is going to be a little bit different. So if we take a look at our result data type that we created up here, uh, we have two different fields. We have one for mess, which is of type string, and the second one here, error, is of type error. So this is going to allow us to handle those errors. So let's go ahead and take a look at our select statement. So we notice that we have this wrapped in a for loop. So this is going to go ahead and execute this select statement over and over and over. So if we want to just run this select statement one time, well, we would just get rid of the for loop. So the select statement looks pretty similar to the switch statement. Switch statement would have, after the keyword, you know, it would have a value be you know, behind it, which it would try and match up with one of the cases. Um, the select statement is going to look for a value that we're receiving from a channel. So if we have something from this channel, we know from the semicolon here that the next line is going to go ahead and be a uh, code we're going to execute should we receive something from you know, that channel. You know, and on this, then, of course, our next case starts with a new case. You know, we receive something from that one. We would you know, execute this code. And say if we receive something from channel three, well, uh, it's going to go ahead and save that value into result, and then we're going to go ahead and check. Remember that res result, um, the variable result, you know, has the data type result, which has that error field that we created. So we're going to check for that error if it's not nil. If we do have an error, we're going to go ahead and print it. And if we hit the return keyword, well, that's going to go ahead and break us out of this this for loop. Um, also, we have, um, you know, in some of your applications, say if you're, you know, got a bunch of Git requests, you don't want those to run forever if they get hung up. Uh, you can actually have a timeout as as well. So uh, we're going to be in the time package around the after function, and we're just giving it, you know, 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, it's going to go ahead and pass a value here. And so then hey, it's going to execute this code, uh, took too long, goodbye, and then the return will break us out of the for loop. Now make sure you do have your error operator or else um, select case must be send or receive, possibly with assignment. So. Okay, and let's take a look at it. So we've created our four channels with four different data types. We're going to go ahead and spin up uh, four different Go routines. So the first Go routine channel, uh, we're going to pass in channel one and we're passing in the string literal, hello world. We take a look at that. So we're passing in channel one, hello world. Uh, this one's just going to sleep for a second. And then we're going to go ahead inside of channel one. We're going to go ahead and pass a value that we passed in, which is going to be hello world. Now, as you can see in uh, sender one, sender two, sender three, we're we're just setting a uh, you know time dot sleep you know to one second, four second, and eight seconds. Now in reality, you, you wouldn't actually know you know what order these are going to come in, but we're just doing this for demonstration's sake, so that way we know what to expect. So let's let's go ahead and run this. We should see channel one first. Yep. Received hello world from channel one. Received 71 from channel two. We received hello from channel three. As you can see, we received this and then we ran this chunk of code here. And then uh, being that it was nil for the error, it was not equal. I'm sorry, it was equal to nil. So we didn't run that chunk. We ran this piece and that's where we got that. Uh, uh, we got that to run. Um, oh, and then finally, uh, we did time out, so took too long, goodbye. Now, like I had said, that we can check for those errors. So let's, let's say that we 
we do get an error. So let's go errors.new, something went wrong. Okay, so we got from channel one, channel two, error, something went wrong. So received a value from uh, channel three, which was this piece of data here, our result data type. And being that on the error field, uh, it had you know an actual error, ran this piece of code and return broke us out of the for loop. Now let's now let's say we we don't run into an error. It's back to nil. If we just want to uh, exit out, we can do that as well. So we've created this uh, channel called done, and we're going to run this function called exit. It's you know, so we're going to spin up this go routine uh, exit. It's taken that done channel. It's just going to wait about eight seconds and it's going to go ahead and you know, pass in the value true to that channel. So once we receive a value, um, it's going to save it in the B. And then we're going to go ahead and print what that value was. Say, hey, time to exit. And then we should break out of our for loop. We received value from channel one. We received value from channel two. All right, received true from the done channel. So, so let's go ahead and go ahead and take time out here. Out and. Just like a uh, select statement, just like uh, anything else with go routines, let's say if it, it still knows if it cannot receive a value. So if we're not going to send anything, it knows nothing can be received on those channels. We should get a deadlock. Let's see, there we go. Deadlock. Yep. All go routines are asleep. And let's say. Let's say uh, we end up waiting. So we're going to go ahead and channel one's going to get there first. And if uh, we put time.sleep, so this code for this case, this condition, you know, this is going to go ahead and run first. But let's look at look what happens. So uh, we're going to go ahead and receive that channel. Now we're still, those other Go routines got fired up. We're still sending stuff, but... Fortunately, we're just wasting the time right here uh, while this code is executing before it checks again. So I wanted to show what that does. Okay, so we've done timeout. We've gone ahead and sent an exit message. Now we can also have, just like a switch statement, we can have a default. Um, notice I do have a, a time.sleep for one second here. If I didn't have this, uh, it would be uh, printing this to the terminal as quick as it could. So let's just show. There we go. So it's still gonna receive from the other channels, but being we're not receiving something all the time, um, we're gonna get uh, no communication as well. Oh, and I guess we still had, we we're still running this one here, which was passing to done, which, you know, hit our return statement. Let's see here. So I think that about, about covers it. Uh, if you, if you like the video, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, only about 20% of my viewership is currently subscribed, so every little bit helps and is greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.